At the beginning of 1665, war broke out between England and Holland, caused by the rivalry of the two countries in respect of maritime and commercial supremacy. In May 1667, after two years of bitter and financially ruinous struggle, the two sides met at a peace conference at Breda to negotiate terms. However, even as the conference was taking place, the Dutch were secretly making final preparations for a daring naval raid in the Thames and Medway, with the intention of destroying dockyard installations and English men of war. On the 9th and 10th of June, the Dutch fleet, under the command of Admiral Mikhail de Reuter, was engaged in operations in the Thames estuary. These were, however, aborted, and the fleet's attentions were turned entirely to the attack of the naval installations and the English fleet moored in the River Medway. The Dutch fleet appeared off the Isle of Sheppey about midday on the 10th of June, and immediately launched an attack on Sheerness Fort. The opposition encountered by the Dutch was weak, and on the 11th of June, Samuel Pepys wrote in his diary, This morning, Pet writes us word that Sheerness is lost. Last night, after two or three hours' dispute, the enemy has possessed himself of the place which puts us in fear of Chatham. Correctly assuming that the Dutch would follow up this victory with an attack on the royal dockyard at Chatham and the English fleet moored in the river, a series of block ships were sunk at the Mussel Bank below Ginningham Reach. And a half-hearted attempt was made to move those men of war moored nearest to the boom chain stretched across the river nearby. Unfortunately, the flagship, the Royal Charles, was not taken up river, despite orders being issued to do so. On the morning of the 12th of June, the Dutch fleet launched their main attack in the Medway. Their man of war, Vrede, with two fire ships, sailed against the defensive chain boom in Gillingham Reach, breaking it and thus opening a passage for the rest of the attacking force. During this initial attack, the English ship Unity was captured and the Matthias blown up. The Charles V was set on fire and this too subsequently blew up. The Dutch now turned their attention to the great prize of the Royal Charles. This they captured with the greatest of ease, as the vessel had been deserted by the small crew placed on board to fight off the enemy. In other areas, the conflict was intense, and soon the river was full of moving craft and burning wreckage. The roar of guns was almost continuous, and the shrieks of the wounded could be heard even above the trumpets, drums and cheers of the Dutch, as success after success was gained. Above everything hung a pall of smoke, illuminated only as night closed in by the gleam of flames on all sides and the flashes of guns and muskets. The ebb of the tide forced the Dutch to break off their attack for that day. However, they resolved to attack the English ships and dockyard installations above Upna on the following morning. On Thursday the 13th of June, the Dutch began their attack and encountered heavy fire both from Upna Castle and from Sir Edward Sprague's gun batteries on the opposite bank. Whilst the Dutch men of war were thus engaged, fire ships sailed onward to attack the English ships at anchor in the river. Soon, the Loyal London, the Royal Oak, and the Royal James were burning furiously. Edward Gregory, Clerk of the Check at Chatham, wrote to Samuel Pepys, The destruction of these three stately and glorious ships of ours was the most dismal spectacle my eyes ever beheld. The noise of battle 
would have been even more intense in the narrow confines of Upna Reach than in the broader waters of Gillingham the day before. The sustained and heavy fire from Upna Castle and Sir Edward Sprague's batteries could not fail to cause considerable damage to the Dutch at this short range. And indeed, their casualties here far exceeded those of the previous day. This fierce opposition, the first real counter-attack that the Dutch had experienced, coupled with the sight of some English ships being deliberately sunk upstream to block further navigation in that direction, caused the Dutch to abandon further action and withdraw. The London Gazette of the 16th of June noted that they came up towards Upner Castle, but were so warmly entertained by Major Scott, who commanded there, and on the other side by Sir Edward Sprague from the battery at the shore, that after very much damage received by them in the shattering of their ships, in sinking several of their longboats, and in the great number of their men killed, they were at last forced to retire. On Friday the 14th of June, the Dutch began their withdrawal down the Medway, taking with them the Royal Charles and the Unity. This withdrawal was a very skillful piece of navigation, which won the grudging admiration of English seamen. Pepys noted on the removal of the Royal Charles that they did carry her down at a time for tides and wind when the best pilot in Chatham would not have undertaken it. In spite of Upna Castle's gallant defence, the Dutch raid of 1667 was a disaster for the English Navy and a triumphant victory for the Dutch.